Scientists are giving us a warning as a underwater volcano the size of a city off the Oregon coast seems to be ready to erupt now. The opportunity to witness things that almost nobody in the world has ever seen before is it's a big discovery, right? It's rocked by 300 earthquakes in one day. And Professor William Wilcock he is professor of oceanography at the University of Washington said, quote, if this was a volcano in places where people lived, they would be evacuated right now. Scientists have detected around 100 earthquakes per day, but the recent peaks are hitting 300 per day. So the seismic activity is a sign that magma's rising. It's moving up through the cracks in the volcano, trying to reach the seafloor, creating an underwater eruption. And this time they are prepared and this might be a spectacle that has never been recorded before because now they have cameras in place and we might actually be able to see it. So what is happening at actual seamount underwater volcano? It is a massive underwater volcano, really, really big in measurements. And it has been rocked by hundreds of earthquakes just today, a sign that it could soon erupt. And it's the most active volcano in the Pacific Northwest, the Pacific Ring of Fire on the West Coast with a lot of volcanoes and the potential for devastating earthquakes. It's nestled about 300 miles off the coast of Oregon, Lincoln City, they have measuring cables and stations that come in to the shoreline there, and it's nearly a mile beneath the ocean's surface. Quakes are small, but for a volcano, they are significant, typically magnitude one or magnitude two, thankfully too far offshore for humans to feel, but they are frequent. And the experts are believing now that the magma is on the move. It's coming upwards. The stage may now be set for an eruption similar to the spectacular eruption that occurred in 2015 when we had 500 earthquakes per day, then 1,000 earthquakes per day, then 2,000 earthquakes per day, guys. So is this the start of an acceleration that leads to an eruption soon? So. Since the magma is rising from very deep within the earth through a complicated and irregular pathway, it's not a straight line where the magma will come up. The inflation at this specific volcano has been less uniform and slower than in past eruptions. That is what, the, what makes this future event, upcoming event, a little bit harder to predict. I mean, they have predicted already last year that they think it will erupt this year. So Professor Wilcox says, we think there will be some warning, but then again, <laughs> volcanoes do tend to surprise people. I hope that this is not the case at the super volcano Campi Flickeri in Italy, because day by day, their news are not good. I just released an update video about new findings that completely change the narrative. You should really watch it, it's in the end screen. But let's get back to our friend, actual Seamount. Yeah, it could surprise us. And the uncertainty about this means that the volcano, by all appearances, may erupt any day now, but researchers believe it's likelier the eruption could also come towards the ends of the year. But some scientists on the other hand say it could be a few days. But when actual Seamount actually does erupt, the number of underwater earthquakes is expected to skyrocket, rising from 100 per day right now to even as many as 10,000 quakes within a 24 hour period. That's what they expect. But again, they just said it could surprise us. At the heart of this volcano, we have a magma chamber, a reservoir of molten rock, half a mile beneath the actual sea floor. And when magma rises or is rising right now, it inflates that magma chamber like a balloon, stressing the surrounding rocks, 
to the max, like stressing this rubber band. And that triggers these swarms of earthquakes. That is basically the same thing with every volcano. That's what's happening in Cabi Flegre, unfortunately, right now, most likely. So the scientists have installed an array of ultra sensitive sensors, including underwater seismometers and GPS stations to monitor basically every shake of axle and of course the swelling, the land rise that's underneath the waves of the Pacific Ocean. But what has them on alert right now, it's not just the earthquakes that are increasing. Another warning sign that is concerning them right now is the inflation, the slow swelling of the volcano as the magma is pressing towards the surface, is filling up the magma chamber below towards the point of maximum elasticity. And if there's no more room in the magma chamber or in the balloon, poof, it bursts and then we have an eruption. In 2015, when Axel erupted, um, it was inflating at two feet per year, was rising at two feet per year. Now it is rising at about eight inches annually. That's still significant, but overall it's less predictable. So what is it doing? The scientists even say this time it's been very erratic. This is the word they're using for, for Axel, erratic. It inflated quickly and then almost completely stopped. And that's what makes this eruption harder to predict. So what's happening? They haven't any signs that there was magma, that there was a magma intrusion that might have been going out, magma going out of the chamber without coming to the surface. No, it just stopped. So is this magma chamber really holding on? And then more pressure and poof, the rubber ring bursts. When it erupted a decade ago in 2015, the lava came pouring out and it has produced 450 foot thick lava flows. Imagine that guys, that's a lot. That's really, really massive. And it has also formed massive structures known as pillow lavas, like bulbous tubes of molten rock. And of course they solidify quickly in the seawater because they're cooled down. And the eruption overall has roughly triggered 8,000 earthquakes. And that, and that's interesting, has caused the bottom of the ocean to sink nearly eight feet. This is how massive this thing is. So this time, there's also the possibility that lava could erupt from a dike. Like basically what we're seeing in Iceland, these long cracks that basically pushes lava sideways through the Earth's crust rather than directly straight up through the seafloor. A geophysicist at the University of Oregon has said, quote, if that happens, the magma could travel laterally and erupt somewhere unexpected. This is what we're seeing in Iceland, the city of Grindavik. Oops, where did that lava come from? Where did that fissure? open here. So the good thing is, guys, the volcano has a very remote location. So even if that should happen, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't endanger anyone living on the coast at all. Really, there's no danger. I know recently I see a lot of reports, videos, articles like monsters going to erupt and uh, hurting people. It's not. That's what scientists are very, very sure. You won't even notice this when, you, when you're on top of the seafloor, most likely. Eruption remote will not threaten human life directly, but still, the scientists are watching it closely. If they say not directly, there's always an indirect way, but so far they haven't given us any outline for that. The interesting thing is what scientists think from watching actual Seamount and from trying to predict what he is doing and by recording what it has done. They're gaining valuable knowledge and they say it could help them redirect their prediction and their knowledge 
um, about these eruptions to nearby other volcanoes that do pose a risk to people. For example, Mount Rainier just had an earthquake swarm. If Mount Rainier sends Lahars, densely, densely populated areas, Orting, Graham, there's Tacoma Olympia. But also, there's many more volcanoes in that area. Famous Mount St. Helens is in the area, Mount Adams, Mount Baker, and then Oregon, we have Mount Hood. And there's many, many other volcanoes. It's the Pacific Ring of Fire, 25,000 miles, a ring that's basically surrounding the Pacific Ocean. Plates are subducting there with the Pacific plate in the middle. And that's causing, of course, where the subduction is happening, it's sinking down in the mantle and it's been heated up and it comes back as magma, very easy set that way. But that's why along these subduction zones, we, we, these, we see these volcanoes, boof, 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 right? And that's especially the case, West Coast, British Columbia, um, Washington, Oregon, also into California. So that would be valuable knowledge if actual could help us to determine what's going on with the other guys. And Mount Rainier that I just mentioned is only 240 miles away from Akshal. So it's not that far. And it has been one of the most active volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest Cascade Range. And a devastating eruption still remains a real possibility in the near future, although the most dangerous thing that's coming from there are these lahars that can travel very far and very fast, and they don't need an eruption to happen. Watch my videos about Mont Rainier, very, very interesting with detailed hazard maps, which area, which populated area would get these lahars, and they're doing evacuation drills for that. You will be surprised. So experts have said it's, it's only a matter of time until Mount Rainier unleashes a devastating volcanic event upon the Pacific Northwest. That doesn't sound so good. I hope it's not in the near future. But it's, it's a huge active stratovolcano and we have over 100,000 people living in cities that are in the direct Lahar area, but even cities like Seattle, if, if it spews a big eruption, right? We have Tacoma, Yakima. Portland, Oregon would also get the ashes. We have to wait and see with actual. I, just, I thought I'll give you an update. Guys, lots of interesting stuff is happening. So please watch the videos in the end screen if you're new here. Wow, I would love to have you as a subscriber. And if you want to support the channel any further, the links are in the description of this video. Just scroll down um, underneath the player, basically. You can buy me a coffee, we can have a chat. I'll answer with a 30 second video message and become a supporting channel member, monthly supporter, click the join button, then you have access to all these behind the scenes and private videos that I'll show you about my my other life other than YouTube, guys. And thanks for your supers. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for your comments. I really enjoy reading them. And it's so valuable. And then all the tips you're giving me about what's happening around the world. So stay awesome, guys. I see you in the next one. Just click here. Bye bye.